in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Look up, please. There is, there is a campaign of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is running to and fro across the length and breadth of this nation, the nation of Africa and across the world, searching for men and women who will avail themselves to be used. Hallelujah. Every time before a Kairos moment in the earth, God begins to prepare a people and the first thing he does is to begin to beckon on them so that they willingly offer themselves and say we are available. Are you listening to me? We are available. And then he separates those people and begins to subject them to the trainings that will equip them for his agenda. Now, the very difficult thing is this. Separation is a very difficult thing because it entails you breaking away from status quo. Breaking away from what has been received as the norm. And so your mind will fight it. Everything around you will fight it. And the pressure that standing alone will bring to you will ask you whether it is worth it to stand. That's why the Bible says, haven't done all to stand. Stand. Hallelujah. And all over the body of Christ, there has been a sudden awakening. Pastors, apostles, preachers, evangelists, as many who are careful enough to listen to the promptings and the dealings of the Spirit. They are beginning to blow this alarm in Zion. And to sound it upon his holy mountain. That there are a people that God is preparing, he's raising, he's training, he's building. And that the fashion of this training is not one that will be traced to the dealings of God in the past. Here and there we could take extracts from the dealings of God with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. But that there is a unique operation of the spirit that he's bringing on this caliber of people. That will necessitate staying with the Holy Ghost part time. You will not miss the Holy Ghost and go back to history and expect to catch up. Because the dealings are foreign to the things that he has done before. And so God will entail that these people will subject themselves to the total leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why coming under the Lordship of the Spirit is only the beginning of the journey. Not the end. Coming under the Lordship means that you are bringing yourself under subjection to say, Lord, you are looking for an army and you are training and preparing men and I may not have all that it takes right now, but I have a willing heart. I watched Catherine Kuhlman yesterday and I cried. I wept like a baby when I watched this dear woman of God standing in power, an epitome of yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And while she stood on the stage ministering the word of God, you could see the oneness, the similitude. You could see how, how intertwined, how mingled this woman had been with the Holy Ghost. That her utterances were so piercing, not because of the volume of her voice, but the depth and the realm from which she was fetching these things from. A woman and she made an interesting statement. She said, Catherine Kuman died a long time ago. She said, I remember the date and the time I died. 
she entered the realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me he has now become my new life and my movement is according to the impulse of the spirit and that is going to be the characteristic of the spiritual man speaking to Nicodemus Jesus said the wind bloweth where it listeth you will not be able to predict this generation of people because they have subjected themselves under the total influence of the spirit that's where we get the word baptism it's from the greek word baptizo it means to be totally immersed in a flood such that you do not see the person again you only see the object that immersed him and so we come under the influence of the holy spirit now, a lot of believers have trivialized the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But without the Holy Spirit, there is no hope. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Listen to me. He is the guarantee that we can become that army to the expectation of God. Because he's the one who guides us and builds us brothers and sisters hear me this has been our journey all through koinonia it is not a move to make a name it's an attempt to cooperate with the spirit and partner with him in bringing a convergence of as many who are interested in becoming part of this move of god who will indicate willingness to subject themselves to the dealings of the spirit over time we don't tell you lies here. We don't hype you with, with all kinds of nonsense. The word of God comes in truth and power. And I've said it again, it will cost you to align with the spirit. The Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with the activities of civilians. And so when you come, there will be a demand upon you to lay aside your ambition and pick up that of the king. But then as surely as the Lord lives, there will be a reward for that sacrifice. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. So I'm aware that there are different kinds of people and different kinds of soils. And so I want us to start tonight by reminding ourselves that every time we appear before God in Zion, we came for business. Hallelujah. We didn't just come to um, enjoy the atmosphere or to while away two or three hours. No. We came based on the revelation. Listen, I must get you to understand this. If you do not, you will not be able to benefit maximally. Are you following me now? You must come with a predetermination that I am coming to continue the training. It is not an endless training. There is a day the sound of the trumpet will blow. And at such times you will appreciate the meticulous dealings of the spirit. Touching issues after issues. Aspects after aspects. Flogging out a lot of things. Pruning different things. The Bible says narrow is the path that leads to life. Why? Because when you are entering that path, Jesus gave us a similitude of that revelation using the eye of the needle. It will, it will entail you divorcing yourself with a lot of things and going alone. So the path is narrow. In other words, the things that can pass have been predetermined. You will not come with excess luggages and mindsets. But wide is the way that leads to destruction. And Jesus said, because the rich people have a lot of things, he said they may not be able to pass. Are you following me? And so you come with your ambitions and different things. And then some of us may come just to use Jesus Christ as an errand boy as usual. Because that's the move that has been taught in the body of Christ. And so we have a need-driven congregation who only come to God as a means to an end. And that end is to satisfy their belly and to bring themselves in a position where they are comforted. Rulers in the feast while the Lord of the harvest is in the congregation. He's not honored 
and he's not esteemed. But the Bible tells us in heaven that there will be a supper. And in that supper, the one who should be the head will actually be the head. Are you following me tonight? And so the first challenge that the Holy Ghost places before us tonight is to ask you how serious are you? How much are you convicted? What is your passion about the things of God and about this army that God is mobilizing? What is your concept of Christianity and church and religion? Why do you pursue God? He said, why do you call me Lord? And then I notice that there is only a receiving from you. There is no doing. You call me Lord because you came and understood by knowledge that there is a dimension of me that is able to supply your needs. You call me Lord because you understand that there is a dimension that is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean if I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, all right, you have tied a covenant with me, go. Later, he found some people sitting and he said, do you love me enough to walk in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement and they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the 11th hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions and they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden. Waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word. But I am more passionate than any other thing. I'm not just pursuing you. Listen. It's time the church body begins to define what is motivating their pursuit to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. The average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things. And we are happy. We are meticulous in planning. The ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake. And every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it. But the one whose agenda we should pursue is left. And the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast. Are you listening to me? And so spiritual growth it's not just an act of knowing scripture. It's first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own. Listen to me. That's not the end. That's the beginning. This is the reason why a spiritual man is, he works so much in the presence of God. Because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. And tonight, what is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? 
or it's a genuine passion you say lord i thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this but i need you to know that i mean business with you are you just pursuing god because you are a student and then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success and the day you cry and you graduate you just wave him and say lord there are many others who didn't backslide like me so you can concentrate on them lovest thou me more than this this was a question that he asked peter because you know listen let me tell you something peter is, a, is an interesting figure when jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples peter said ah i respect you so much i mean come on how can you clean my feet jesus said you do not even know what i'm doing and peter said now just bath me now i understand and he was the one who ran away and betrayed jesus to the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself hallelujah and when the hidden agenda that was in their heart see eventually over time the agenda in their heart for pursuing jesus began to unravel when the mother of james and john came to meet jesus on behalf of her two sons meaning they were already nursing it that jesus will conquer caesar and now become the king of the roman empire and then at that point the disciples will become members of the cabinet so while they were pursuing him they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground and they used their mother and the mother will say you know i'm a woman what will you do to my children because i got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following jesus they didn't think about it jesus was a celebrity come and they say of course i've always wanted and then later on when they found out that this journey was getting too long they started asking questions first among themselves this is why you see a preacher 10 years diligence in, in god and then after a while he just says lord at least heaven knows i've tried because the motif that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed hallelujah are you following me tonight the light of god is searching our hearts to help us this is how we grow in the spirit and then at a particular time they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of jesus because they did not understand what governmental authority is they did not understand that you only receive results when you are sent jesus went with peter james and john and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them they said look why wait for jesus can't we take initiatives on our own and they brought somebody who was epileptic and they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit and how things are done they began to assume the position so that in the absence of jesus they might receive a temporary glory and console their loss before his arrival and they were disappointed because they saw jesus do it with ease and they thought it would happen that same way here and there in the bible you will see men who pursue jesus christ for different reasons people who wanted to buy anointing so the the, the the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation when they saw that by the laying on of hands men were receiving the holy ghost how much let me give you and the church of christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of god selling what they perceive to be the anointing and we have a church that will not grow because the price for growth is unbearable and so we rather prefer to in, to to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic and whatever can stand to give us a momentary succor so if i need to find out whether it's the will of god for the job or not i know that if i'm to follow the regular part of the spirit i may need to wait upon the lord in praying and fasting for three days and i say why waste my time when there is a donkey called a prophet and an apostle that we can ride gloriously on and so we have a result oriented church man of god tell me what will become of my life and we do not know him 
and we are not even interested in the agenda of God. And let me tell you friends, if God does not raise carpenters to judge the manifestation of these horns that rise up against Judah, I tell you there will be casualty in our generation. A time will come when the new age will wipe Christianity if we do not stand. And this is why God is creating platforms like this across the nations, the remnant, who will stand and say, no, this is not the pattern of the spirit. Are you listening to me? It cannot be church as usual. The average Christian is taught know nothing about Jesus. Do you know, I asked somebody one day, I said, who is Jesus? Born again, spirit filled. I said, who is Jesus? And he was shocked to find out that he did not even know what to tell me about Jesus. He just said, he's the savior of the world. Let me ask you, who is Jesus? No, no, no. Don't give me a, a guesswork or what you got from your Bible. Who is Jesus? Do you know him? If you don't stop telling lies on stage that he's your friend. Because the way we talk about him is as though we drank tea with him. But then you ask him, who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Ghost? Amazing that the church does not even know the Holy Ghost. Scholars know more about the Holy Ghost than the church. They have researched as critics and come up with facts that the church is not even aware. We are not interested. The message about Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the kingdom and the life of God, the priority and the agenda of the Father that should be the pivot of the operation of every church is absent. And we have replaced it with all kinds of activities. Making money, promoting people. And you see people trying to be zealous in church and all they are looking for is the name deacon or pastor. And that becomes our ultimate satisfaction. There needs to be a redefinition of what has been motivating us in our pursuit for God. No wonder at every challenge many believers stand and give up. But the Bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle, that means you did not gather strength. Hallelujah. If I were the pastor of many churches, after this service, they will, they will have a board meeting about me. I say, we don't like this kind of thing. You don't come and spoil our minds. Read about Jesus Christ. Elijah was called the troublemaker in Israel. And right now you have believers who come into a building and say, why didn't they put AC? I'm sweating and I'm getting inconvenienced. But students can stand to collect scholarship in front of guidance and counseling. In the hot sun, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. You are determined to get it. No matter what happens, you stand on that line. You maintain your position. They want to push you. You say, I'm not going anywhere. They say, you're a lady. You say, I know. I will show you I'm a lady on Jesus. We, 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 so we have that spirit of determination. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, you hold a service after one hour, 30 minutes, everybody's looking at their watch. And it's not like they have what, something to do afterwards. Because immediately after the meeting, you see them greeting one another for hours. So why the hurry? What is motivating us? What drives our pursuit for God? Are we passionate? When Jesus came, he said, listen, this is my meat. In other words, I derive satisfaction in this. To do the will of the Father. He said, I must walk the, him, the works of him that sent me while it is day. He placed urgency on his assignment for the night coming. When no man can walk again. Is there an urgency in your spirit to pursue God? Hallelujah. And then the second group of people in church that we have are those who have pressed onto God to a measure and then got to that measure and based on what we want to call movements, holiness movement, word of faith movement, charismatic movement, the moment you contend to the point that you enter the 
the revelations of a movement you are satisfied and there is no pressure upon our spirits to contend for greater height not realizing that there are certain scrolls that have been closed that if we will contend it will be open unto us and we will open up new revelations about God and be a blessing to the body and so I ask you a question tonight under God are you really interested in the agenda of the father what are you really define what motivates you heaven wife money cgpa a job at what point will you rest and say kai i've tried in this christian journey you must define it right now i will go I will go wherever you lead me. Yeah. I will go. I will go. I will go wherever you lead me. Yeah. I will go. Can that be? the anthem of your life that when people ask you and say what is your plan and goal in life you will first tell them that all that I'm about to tell you is a derivative of what God has committed unto me I did not cook, sit down and cook up any ambition for myself because I am bound by an oath to my savior that I will stand and live for him. I have brought myself willingly under the government and the sovereign rule of the king. And I will not compromise. Before I continue, we are going to pray for five minutes. And that prayer, listen to me, please. Don't bow your head. We are not bowing heads here. We are going to pray audibly. Hallelujah. And the prayer is going to say, Lord... I lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. You will hear us preach this again and again. Lord, I will bow to you to no other. We are going to repent before we continue in this service. The first repentance is to say, Lord, I'm ashamed to find out that there has been a hidden loss that has been motivating my pursuit for you. But tonight I repent. Are you listening to me? You're going to pray. Because you know I'm not lying. I pray this to God every time. I said, Lord, if there is any other reason aside from my love for you, why I pursue you, judge it, prune it, and bring me to a point where I become a dead man without you. Is that your prayer? We are going to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I lay down idols. I cannot deny that I have needs. But Lord, I have led these needs to motivate my love for you. Come on, pray. Come Lord, hidden in me is the ability to want fame. I cannot deny it. And while it is not bad, I have allowed it to motivate my pursuit. Lord, I've been crying for spiritual gifts because I don't want to. I've suffered inferiority complex. And so I'm looking for what will ease it away. And unfortunately, I allowed it to slip and become my motivation for you. Lift your voice and pray. Kata kata palada bakai. Lepro sote Kapate krosto pendekete baladaba. Rapa kasto prosko pendekete. Pray. Say Lord I came here. With a need. But Lord. In the light of your word. 
if I will be honest with myself I'm just pursuing you the hunger increased simply because I needed a solution not because I love you not because I was passionate about your agenda make sure you are praying make sure you are praying make sure you are praying I have made you too small in my eyes we are still praying oh Lord forgive me and I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me but tonight in koinonia but now oh lord i see my wrong heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my soul Oh Lord, be mad. Come on, magnify him above your knees. Oh Lord, be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted. for God will tell in your desire for evangelism your passion for God will tell in how much you give to the house of God your desire will tell how much you pray for the house of God your desire will tell and how much you love the word of God how much you love his spirit we are still praying five minutes say Lord search my heart I'm not pretending tonight I cannot lie there are idols in my heart I'm a Christian I'm born again I'm filled with the Holy Ghost but Lord if you do not give me certain things after some time I may begin to reconsider my passion help me tonight I came to Koinonia for my passion to be with you help me I want to grow help me
will lift my hands and I will sing. I will sing holy. To my Lord and Savior, my God and King, I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. And is and is to come. I will sing before His throne forever and ever. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've taken your pursuit and replaced it with many things. Say, Lord, I didn't even know. When certain desires overtook a genuine passion, I was so distracted by the burdens upon me that I did not realize that I had missed out on a genuine passion. Genuine passion. Not tied to marriage. Not tied to money. Not tied to fame. Not tied to ministry. Not tied to anointing. I have been crucified with Christ I have been crucified with Christ Nevertheless I live Yet not I But Christ 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 in me Christ above me Christ before me Christ by my side My motivation The beginning the end hallelujah listen to me listen God is re-examining the foundations from which our pursuit for Christ is hinged on because the Bible says if the foundation it says if the foundation be destroyed are you listening to me we are still praying I have not finished the teaching but I just sense in my spirit to sing one more song it's all about you it's all about you if you don't believe it don't sing it yet keep quiet keep quiet when you get the revelation you can join but for as many who mean it, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hey, it's all about you. It's all about you. Hey, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. of standing for Jesus in the presence of your friends is because you are not yet convinced that's why you cannot share Jesus with others you are afraid of the embarrassment you are conscious of your beauty that's an idol you are conscious of it lest it will kill an opportunity to be in a relationship you cannot share Christ with your business partner with your lecturer We have replaced him with different things in our hearts 
So every time Satan comes, he comes projecting your loss first and foremost so that you cannot resist. Lord help us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you are here. Please be seated and let's continue. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that before the day of the Lord, listen to me, the spirit of Elijah Malachi 4 before the spirit before the day of the Lord the spirit of Elijah will be sent forth to prepare the way and so before Jesus came the spirit of Elijah was sent forth and he began to prepare the way how was he preparing the way calling the people to realize how bad they had fallen not because he could redeem them Baptism at that time was not a sign of new birth. It was an indication that they would be interested in what Jesus was coming to offer. So as many who were convicted by his teaching, prepared their hearts so that when the Messiah showed up, they would not resist him. For John himself did not have any power to save any man. But he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was an echo and right now that same spirit of Elijah has been released upon the body of Christ to expose the works of iniquity and to bring the sons of God into righteousness and this is what is happening across every church and every denomination that truly names the name of Christ is a manifestation of this prophetic spirit that is able to receive of the things of God and communicate it fearlessly This is how your Christianity will last. So that 30 years from now, you will raise your children in the fear of the Lord. They will know no other doctrine and no other gospel. By default, they will, they will be built knowing that they love God and they have a passion for Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. When the Holy Ghost brings you to this position, the next thing that happens is He begins to subject you through different dealings and trainings. Please listen, this is important. This is the principle, the way God prepares His army. And the way, hallelujah. Now, please look up. One is not a tragedy, but if we don't do anything about it, it will become an old wine. Hallelujah. There was a time in the body of Christ when our pursuit was for Rema. Praise God. Please listen to me. Rema. And the quality of your ministry was proportional to the depth of Rema. Insight into scripture. Hallelujah. How you could compare scripture with scripture. How you could quote whole chapters. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong in that. We gave awards to people for quoting chapters and chapters of scripture. But I needed to know that in the progression of the dealings of God. Listen. The Holy Ghost begins by exposing you to the knowledge of God. Are you listening to me? He brings you to that point where you begin to know about God through the scripture. You begin to browse through scripture and see the character of God and see his life and his nature and his principles. But can I tell you something? And this is where a lot of the church body need to upgrade their life. And anytime I say this, people get offended. I don't castigate ministers. But I am the voice that must echo the things that I hear in the spirit. Are you listening to me? I don't have a problem with any church. In fact, there is no channel I don't watch. But listen to me. Let me tell you something. When you say, I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. That settles it. 
I need you to know, listen to me, that it's not the fault of those who have brought this revelation. And it's not a lie. But that is not all there is. Are you listening to me? It's not a lie because scripture cannot be broken. However, if that is the only perspective that is seen in the body, then there is no completion. Are you following me now? And so there was a, an error and a dispensation where our fathers contended and pressed in the spirit and they came into that dimension where they began to understand that, wow, from scripture, I'm free from condemnation. Are you listening to me? I'm free. But the Bible says knowledge shall increase, meaning it was not supposed to stop with that discovery. Are you listening to me? That is a sign of a healthy Christian that there is progression into the depths of the spirit. The Bible says we see in part and according to that part we prophesy. So when God enlarges that which you see, you begin to prophesy. But many people have camped around certain revelations and will fight anything that looks above it, calling it error. Are you listening to me? There are many people who have been taught in church that there's nothing like demons. Nothing like Satan. The only demon you have is in your mind. But that's not true. Well, for those who grew up under CNN, but for those who my father's mother was a traditionalist. Are you listening to me? So, I'm not trying to guess that Satan exists. It's one thing to believe he exists. It's another thing to believe he has power over you. That is where it's faulty. Are you listening to me? But for you to just kick away and say, forget it, there's no demon anywhere. Ha, be careful. Because many of the people who are speaking will later on find out the reason why they are stunted in their life and will not make advancement. A number of them have discovered it, but their arrogance will not allow them to admit that they have seen a greater light. And so they would rather prefer to come in what they believe to be the final revelation of the dimension of God that is given to man. When you read a lot of Kenneth Hagin's books, there are many things written in that book that you might not totally agree with right now. Is that correct? That was because during Kenneth Hagin's time, the level and the operation of the spirit and the truths that were opened there was what he received and documented. So you cannot criticize him. But at the same time, in as much as we call him a general, we cannot stop at that level. Are you listening to me? So I cannot build a camp around Kenneth Hagin and say all that he taught, the thing that was moving the church was physical manifestation, gold dust, silver dust. Everybody will bring every kind of thing. Your watch, the, the silver on your watch will scratch on your hand and say, see, gold dust. And it was not wrong. Listen to me. But the Holy Ghost was studying the way we were responding to it. The moment it would become an idol, he sees that experience so that we will continue with the next dealings of the Spirit. But where you encamp around gold dust and you find your ministry around gold dust and oil and so on and so forth, then there will be trouble because you will resist those who are progressing in the Spirit and you will try to create many teachings to prove that they are in error not knowing that you are the one who is taunted and even when the holy ghost is ministering to you a time will come the light will be too bright you cannot explain and so you will begin to get angry because the people are not stupid the bible says it will happen to us as it happened in nephta and zebulun he said the people in nephta and zebulun there was a prophecy he says those who are in darkness they have seen a great light not a light a great light So it will happen. A great light. One characteristic of a healthy church is the ability to transit with the spirit. But when the man of God takes the place of God and makes himself the final authority in the church, he is unable to adjust because his ego will not be able to accommodate the explanations he has to give for his transition in the spirit. Transition in the spirit is not, is not a thing of embarrassment. Hallelujah. There are ministers who stop their members from reading some books because of insecurity. They want to keep the members around what they believe is the full and universal counsel of God. And I hear a lot of ministers teach with such arrogance and they do not know that there are other dimensions that are being opened up. 
there are many who did not stop in yesterday's wine they kept contending and god is opening greater doors and those doors just like in 2005 when the revival came to the campus about the ministry of the holy spirit and what we know today to be new creation realities it happened in 2005 and that was the time when we were coming into this knowledge we didn't even know these things we were coming into this knowledge the revelation of kenyon's teachings the revelation of pastor chris's teachings i mean i was so blessed i'll never forget how many times we lock ourselves boy we're stepping into things in the anointing those times if someone fell on the floor you will run and catch the person and take him to sick bay because you are not sure what happened but right now even in your prayer group three people even unbelievers now have acclimatized to the fact that there is a manifestation of the spirit and people can fall but we cannot stop there mm. and so what is there what else is there to look because the mistake that many of us are making in our churches and the rest is we are encamping around an experience and will not move as see a man of god is not the one who is supposed to look at the people he's supposed to set his eyes on the cloud the moment the cloud begins to motion movement he alerts the people and said the cloud is moving begin to follow and move are you listening to me because at that time we are taught that if there is no instant manifestation in your life something was wrong with your faith and so while the holy ghost was trying to deal with us and taking us through processes that will bring us into maturity those teachings were were wrestling his ministry in our lives but as an act of god's grace we're able to switch and to align and to realize that in hebrews 11 there were women who raised their dead back and women those times we could not explain what happens if a family dies hallelujah we don't know what message to tell them because we have been taught you are supposed to stand and live forever and any death is a sign of weakness and satan and so on and so forth but that was good to a measure but it is not applicable today there must need to be a growth and so we read from scripture by the holy ghost how that some people died are you listening to me without receiving the promise and he said other people raised their dead back to life he joined all the experiences and called it faith so we began to question the things that we had been believing not to scorn the people but to say look where they put full stop is supposed to be a comma there are many of you there are experiences god is giving you you have not found the confirmation yet i hope we have time wherever we can stop today and every time you go to your pastor they tell you no this kind of thing we, we don't like it you see that it is a new operation it's the manifestation of the new wine it must be discerned in an atmosphere where people have ears and they can tell you although this is strange we confirm by the spirit that this is an operation of the lord fire on many of you have stunted your spiritual growth because of different messages you have heard for instance i know people who say just pray for five minutes and pray for ten minutes you are a king speak it once <laughs> brother let me tell you the truth if that is how you want to raise your christianity there will be a bitter casualty that will teach you a lesson that may take decades for you to recover from because the bible gives us the character of a man of prayer he said elijah was a man of like passion he said he prayed earnestly are you listening to me so there is nothing wrong in receiving the teachings that you have but i'm only saying we salute the generals i respect every man of god i mention them by name they have been impacts to our lives until today we still listen to them forever they remain generals they have entered the hallmark of grace however there is a fresh mandate upon our generation are you listening to me and according to the measure of grace that is coming upon us we cannot use the new discoveries we are having to mock them for that will be immaturity but at the same time we will not refuse to progress because we want to pay our homage and allegiance to their doctrines are you growing tonight 
because if I don't balance this many of you will now stand and watch some of our fathers and hear their revelation like I see a lot of people do and they just laugh they say I've left this realm when you find yourself doing that you are a child it's not demon possession the remedy is just to grow up are you listening to me I have tapes and tapes I follow the men of God attentively because listen although Eli's eye was dim it was Eli who told Samuel that it was the voice of God Eli was a type of our fathers although their eyes are getting dim not because they are backsliding but their dispensation and the blueprint of their prophetic agenda is coming to an end so there is a mantle transferring the spirit although they may to some of you not look relevant we approach them with discretion one leg we are approaching the spirit and saying holy ghost we are trusting you and then we are receiving direction you see the balance so you don't begin to use your revelation and say ah this ministry they just teach on this and that and that no we appreciate them and we salute them forever they are called generals compared to them we are only but toddlers rising up in the spirit however he told jeremiah do not be afraid of the people and say i am young for i will put my words in your mouth he said go and speak so there is an emergence of people we will be persecuted because of our age and because we are not conforming to the mold of religion how be it there is a new wine and the one who sent us will stand to defend us this is why you will see a lot of young people doing supernatural things for god but then if we are careful and we are trained enough we will realize that in the midst of all of these things we ought to give god glory hallelujah so tell your neighbor change your full stop to a comma say it one more time change your full stop to a comma do not reject the operations of the spirit open up yourself please don't be caught up in that thing my church my pastor this is what we believe God is leading you to a book in the bookstore it may be by an author you don't like there's nobody I don't watch let your mind grow while nobody if I cannot learn anything at least I can learn diligence in ministry so you must maintain a posture are you listening to me So the dealings of the spirit when the holy ghost begins to walk and shed off a lot of religion from our lives follow me to romans please let's see how far we can get and then we'll pray blessed be the name of the lord can we pray in tongues for two minutes just seated go ahead and pray in tongues get used to it the bible says these signs will follow them that means when the authentic church arises by grace this will be part of the signs like I said there are many of you who probably may be here and have a problem with what we are doing don't reject it just open up your heart and seek understanding we are loving enough to explain Rabba kata praste pataka de bele de bos. Rabba soto pando koproske ba. Akria kate bele de bos. Shaprosa. Rabba tekete. Nembrati kata. Lord, let me grow. Lord, let me grow. Lord, let me grow. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to lag behind. Bante kaposa ta preteke bala de bos. Hallelujah. The first thing that happens to you. Hallelujah. The work of a believer is that by acknowledging that Jesus is Savior over your life and His Lordship, the Bible makes us to understand that the Spirit of God comes to live in you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that is joined to Christ is what? 
one spirit so there is a oneness that happens from the realm of your spirit what is the result faith is imparted in you and suddenly you begin to gain meaning over spiritual things the things you would have rejected because the spirit of God lives in you he begins to direct you now watch this you will read in your Bible as you progress in this journey now you are born again and then you begin to read in your Bible let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich wonderful then you find another one you have been anointed to heal the sick to cast out devils wonderful you keep noting the scripture hallelujah by the time you have 30 or 40 beautiful scriptures now you will, you will rise up based on the confidence of those scriptures God will not fail hallelujah then your first attempt on a man on a wheelchair he doesn't stand and then a question begins to brew in your heart what happened hallelujah and then you saw that you are the head and not the tail then your result came out and you saw a carryover and he said well uh, uh, God is just something is there. you just leave the question mark there and then some of us go to our men of God and say please what meaneth these things I'm not getting it the things I see in scripture and the manifestation in my life is creating a contrast and most of us men of God all we tell God's innocent people because that is the limitation of the perspective that we see you don't have faith it's not enough stir up your faith if his faith is you walk now the people stay how do I stay and they get books and they keep reading they read different kinds of books volumes of books to the point that they can recite the books and then they don't see a noticeable improvement in their life and they come back and then we are unable to give them answers listen to me the journey of a believer the moment you give your heart to the Lord, listen, you begin to progress from knowing God to entering into an experiential walk with Him. Are you listening to me? And the experience of God with a man cannot be taught. It is unique. It is a unique dealing. Are you listening to me? Now, through those experiences, your convictions about the things you see in the world begin to crystallize and gain substance. Are you listening to me? The first area of argument is your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Let's look at it quickly. Romans 8. From verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do what? They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He said for to be carnally minded. That means to be ruled by your senses. To be ruled by your emotions. To be ruled by the things you see. The things you hear. And all of these things. The Bible says to be ruled by them. Any other thing. Other than Christ. Is death. In other words. It is an effort in futility. Hallelujah. And so your mind begins to wrestle the things of God. Because when God steps into your life, listen, He's not seeking a space. He's seeking the whole. He's not seeking a part of you. And say, okay, other things. Uh-uh. The moment He stands there, He begins to wrestle and push every other thing. Hallelujah. And that's where the willing submission of a believer begins. Listen to me. You can choose where to stop in your spiritual journey by saying, Lord, I've tried and I've come thus far. This one will not go. God will begin to touch them. One. Are you ready to listen to me? So you love God so much. And then one day God will say, empty your account. You say, Abba God, I bind, I reject that demon. He has taught something. He's bringing your finances into obedience with Christ. Then he touches your, your uncle who sent you money all the time. Say, Lord, my faith is working. Now he doesn't send you money. And what happens? Eh, my faith is still working. After two months, 
you really find out that the one you've been trusting was not God. Hallelujah. And then he keeps touching those things until he comes to a point where he is exalted king. I like a song that says, He's exalted, the king is exalted on high. You know that song? He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Powerful song. So the Holy Ghost begins to wrestle your flesh. What happens? You are born again. And although you are shouting, but the issue of women, you have not, you have not surrendered that part. So there is half Babylon, half. You are, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are preaching. Hallelujah. But then you sit down and start remembering those days when you, in the, you are in the world. And every lady that passes around you, if any guy stands, you say, you are covering my view, please. There is a contention. This is what the Bible is telling us. Are you following me now? Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It now begins to tell us, it said, now I say then walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It said, for the flesh lusted after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh and both of them are consistently under contention. And then although you are born again, you find out that you are still involved in masturbation and certain things. You may not tell people, but this has contentions. You are praying about it. I'm showing you the progression. Then you begin to see every kind of thing. When you are praying before God and you are praying in tongues, you begin to see God brings out the state of your heart. Envy, lust, jealousy. You say, Lord, me? Me? I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But then you are seeing your old man. Cain is alive and strong. Wrestling with Abel. And because Cain is the elder brother of Abel. That flesh, it had gained dominance in your mind. Now Abel wants to come and take his place. And so there is a contention. Are you listening to me? The old man does not want to give way. The old man does not want to give way. And then Satan gives you an alternative. He said, look, there is something called the grace of God and God's mercy. Why don't you wrap yourself around that revelation and let everything go? And so you are laughing. You are saying, hallelujah. All things are working well. But you sleep in the night and people come and press you and sleep with you. You get up in the morning and it's not a problem. You will never tell anybody. You're just smiling. But these are questions you are asking. And say, what is wrong with my new creation status? And God is saying, no, it's a journey. Your mind is giving room for Satan to find expression in your life. And you are unable to lay down everything. Are you listening to me? You love God. It does not mean you are a devil. Don't let anybody condemn you. But you must not condone your state. You must do something about it. Hallelujah. You never believed you could steal. One day. In the heat of hunger. You just saw 100 naira wanting to take it. The Holy Ghost told you it's your roommate's own. You can't say you didn't hear him. And you said Lord. The flesh. Contending with the spirit. And he said, does it really matter? Lord, if I ask her, she will give me. So what's the difference? God is saying, ask them. Because there is a protocol in the spirit. And you just whistle and squeeze out and carry the hundred naira. You buy bones and you eat. And God keeps quiet. It does not mean he's endorsing you. He's only encouraging you. Because a time will come, his light will shine in that area of your life. While men slept, the enemy planted tears among the wheat and the people who were with the husband man said should we begin to walk he said no in the process of pruning it you will remove some things so let them grow there is a level you get to then god will say all right about this issue of masturbation it's been two years and uh, although you have been healing the sick like can we deal with it now he said oh i'm a new creation what kind of embarrassment is this 
oh lord don't bring up this issue and satan begins to give you an excuse we have a church that is so dignified and we cannot open up ourselves before god because we think it's an act of weakness can i tell you something friends if you must grow and be truth if, if, if you must grow and be mature and stand in truth then you must open up your heart and let the holy spirit examine your mind and prune out everything that does not conform to christ hallelujah while that is happening you will seem to be standing in one place in your journey other people have started ministry since they are going they are already on air you are there cleaning out a lot of things are you listening to me because god is saying the kind of army i need to present and your colleague who you started laboring in the spirit together has seven branches now and the guy looks at you and says, are you there's an urgency in the spirit let's run the harvest is wide and he said are you prepared guys are you joking meanwhile his choir ladies cannot rest again because the realm of the spirit does not know whether you are apostle or prophet and so in the middle of the teachings what happens Cain you look at a beautiful lady patience how and then you are preaching and then Cain says this side again and you look and you say I have a prophetic word for you now it's not your fault you love the Lord but you did not stay sufficient for the Holy Ghost to begin to take over your mind so although you are prophesying suddenly you are a prophet and you notice that Sam is the general manager of a bank and by prophetic insight you are giving access to his account number say Sam stand up while you say stand up the message that is coming from God is that you walk steadfastly but you add command to where God stops and Cain rides out with the prophecy he said more so God is telling you to drop an amount and because of the accuracy of your delivery you are consoled and you think it is God are you listening to me and so based on it you open a ministry but then you find out that there are many things although before people you are great in the spirit you weigh very small because you have refused to stay in the spirit and then your members begin to contend for truth and they come to a point where they begin to discern that something is wrong although these guys anointed and have the gift of the spirit we do not see the character that represents the posture of a matured man in the spirit then you begin to come up with all kinds of rules be quiet and don't challenge authority whatever we give you god will not talk to you people except he comes to us have you had teachings like that that's lack of fire in progress brothers because the bible is very explicitly clear mm, this is what you get in koinonia We want us to be strong listen i trust the lord that the least person among us will be as strong as david we won't lie to you that's why we hold miracle services is that correct and you come we don't bug you with all these things we just pray but when it comes to building watch me there was a day now i'm careful to say this some years ago the Lord told me that I should not open my Bible for one week and I did not understand could that be the spirit of the Lord or not but I eventually found out that it was God and God gave me the reason he said son every meeting that happens you are going like many of you are here with your notebooks it takes something in your head to be the head you know how Bishop Oedeko writes powerful statements. Take something in your head to be the head. Now he's writing. You are jotting. He's speaking from a depth of revelation. You just want Rema. And he said, boy, if I preach on this in my Thursday fellowship, they will know that I'm not an ordinary person. Now you are getting these things. He's speaking from the bowels of the spirit. But it came to you just as knowledge. Rema. Are you listening to me? And now you are writing it. And God told me, he said, son, you have gotten many things that can move you forward, but you are not moving forward. You are junking your head with knowledge.
close your Bible and let's begin to bring you into the experience of these revelations that you had. So I didn't say, you see, it's my unique dealing. That's why I can't write a book about it. Are you listening to me? And God began to open me up. I remember that's when God began to teach me on character. Look, let me tell you, I was walking in the anointing of the spirit in a way you cannot imagine. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, this is the experiential dealing now. I'm teaching you how the Holy Ghost trains you. He begins to subject you through personalized experience that only you can tell. The only thing is when you share the experience with another person, you will find out that although the, the patterns of dealings are different according to what he wants you to become, but you see that there is a similarity of objectives, what he's trying to achieve. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost made me to draw a diagram of the fruit of the Spirit versus their manifestation in my life. Personalized dealings. He is training me. He is now giving life to the head knowledge I've had of Scripture. I knew it so well. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I knew this in, right from Sunday school. But now there was, it was now time for the reality. And let me tell you something. For the first time in my life, my ego was tongue to my knees. I was shocked to find out that less than 10% of the fruit of the Spirit was alive and working. Although I was anointed, although we were praying for people, although we had gone for crusades, I said, ah, Lord, you have to help me. Thank God it's only me and you that is seeing this thing. Let's flog it out right now. Are you listening to me? Do not be embarrassed when God calls you to your knees as a general. It's not a symbol of shame. He's pulling you to lift you. So don't be embarrassed to find out that there is an issue you need to flog out in your life. Don't let religion lie to you and say it's all over. Walk out that soteria, that salvation with fear, reverence for God and with trembling because it has consequences if you leave it. Hallelujah. And when I began to do that, I saw improvement in my life and people were happy when I went for ministration, they say we have a very humble servant of God. And I could imagine the Holy Spirit saying, now you are you not enjoying the blessings? I thought that was over. Later on again, he said, there's part two of that character dealing. And he gave me another dealing. And I found out I failed flawlessly. Although you people can see me and say, wow, great man of God. It's only me and God that knows the dealings and the levels. Are you listening to me? Many preachers will not tell you this because they stand as omniscient, omnipotent, and omni whatever. And let me tell you, if they don't take steps, they will be embarrassed. Because the realm of the spirit has no apology for what your members call you. You begin to contend for the experience. Listen, and in that contention, you begin to know the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? You begin to know the Holy Ghost. There are certain promptings of the Spirit that come upon me to know the kinds of anointings that are in a place. I cannot teach you. I can only explain. It's my personalized dealing. In the place of prayer, there is a way and a manner that the Holy Ghost moves upon me that I know that I've hidden something in the Spirit. And I know that this prayer has been answered. Are you listening to me? There is a way I can sense danger. If somebody wants to call me, maybe to pray for the sick. Sometimes, few minutes before that time, I suddenly sense the anointing of the Spirit. And I sense the presence of healing angels. How did I learn that? The experiential dealings of the Spirit. This is how a believer grows. One day you are praying, suddenly your tongues begin to change. That's your first time of encountering it. And then you are saying, what is happening? Suddenly I found out that I cannot even talk again. I'm voicing but I'm not speaking. These are questions. The Holy Ghost is luring you deeper with these experiences. People may reject it but you know. Suddenly you, you are praying and you begin to sense the presence of people. You know that you are not alone in that room. And now your spirit is being trained. It's a customized dealing. This is not the type. There are many of you while I'm speaking right now. The first time I was speaking, you were caught up in the spirit. You didn't even know that it was a spiritual experience. Suddenly you found out that we are sharing the grace. 
and you just smiled you went back home quietly and then you ended that dealing instead of you to begin to contend with the spirit every time you prayed you would lie down and see something that will happen exactly the next day you trivialized it but after seeing it two or three times the holy ghost is saying this is part of the tools you will need as my army and so begin to take note of it i sleep with notebooks i sleep with my bible my notebooks and my pen because at every time you see so you begin to walk with the spirit and you come to a point where you can look at someone and be able to help the person out of the abundance of your experience are you listening to me the atmosphere of your spirit is alive now your mind begins to submit gradually but surely to the lordship of the spirit you begin to imbibe his word his word now the the holy spirit begins to orchestrate occasions that will make the word be living and active in your life so it's no longer just a logos here it has become true are you listening to me and then one time you will have cause and your father or your mother will not send you money and the holy ghost will say i want to show you a dimension of me that is accessible i want to train you and build you and then he says now depend on me get up and go to your friend's room as you are stepping into your friend's room you see him with an envelope of five thousand he says the lord was leading me and you say so that dealing i thought was my mind was the holy ghost you are growing there is a progression are you listening to me there is a progression suddenly you sit down and you sense guys something is wrong and you just tell your colleague let's pray let's pray five minutes later they call and they say someone had a ghastly motor accident and he would have died and god said note that impression i will make reference to it again your customized dealings with the spirit this is how a christian becomes a mature person because over time you begin to gather these things and the holy ghost begins to shed light and he begins to teach you so prayer becomes exciting not because you want to go and do religion you anticipate a new experience and so you are praying and wondering what next will the holy ghost do suddenly you are praying on your own the next thing you wake up and find out that you were on the floor when you fell you did not know you thought you were too praying but suddenly you found out that you had been in a vision for a long time and you said lord what what is going on in my life the dealings are you learning something please then you begin to pray then you begin to build there are times that you are sleeping and god gives you a dream and you get up and there is no direct application of that dream in your life the dream was an explosion of your mind and your spirit to acclimatize with the dealings of god so that scripture will now begin to make sense based on the things you have visualized in your dreams so you find yourself walking on water and in that dream a lot of people say mommy water calm down don't just call everything satan you find yourself walking with jesus on water in a dream He's giving you the feeling so that when you come back and open that scripture, light that never entered you will now enter you. There are times in the dream you see yourself laying hands on the sick and you have the feeling of victory, the manifestation of faith. And every time God will preserve that memory in your mind so that the next time you see somebody in a wheelchair, you have that same feeling and it will, end, it will help the anointing to flow in your life. And suddenly for the first time, it will be like a dream. Are you following me tonight? The dealings of the spirit. Bringing the knowledge of God into the experience of God for you. Then you begin to speak. You are understanding the operations of the spirit. Now when you stand to preach, listen, you will not just talk as if you are talking your convictions are getting stronger listen when you experience god that's the only condition that you can die for him it's not by confession are you listening to me stand up sweetheart my dear look at me if i call you a man what will you do about it There are too many experiences in your life 
that have crystallized in your spirit, soul, and body that you are a lady. Is that correct? For instance, men don't wear with one except there's something wrong with them. Except there is a drastic shortage of the dealings of the spirit in their lives. Please sit down. Now, this is a lady. If you give birth to a baby, listen, do you know if you separate a baby from any other person and you keep telling that baby you are a boy, you are a boy, although she's a lady, she will grow up knowing and thinking and acting like a man. Because the first experience she receives is on account of what you are speaking to her. Are you listening to me? That's why God designed the trainings of ladies and men to be such that no man can deceive another. When the guy becomes a teenager, suddenly his voice is getting husky. Final betrayal. Nothing can deceive him that he's a lady. And then he sees mustache on his face. But all these things begin to tell him, look, Mr. Man, you are not a lady. And then, what are they doing? There are memories in his mind. And then he comes to a point where he's convinced and he can die believing that he's a man. So that when Americans are saying right now, uh, there are factors we need to look at to ascertain whether a man is a man or a woman. You say you are on your own. I know and I am persuaded that I'm a man. This is how it must be. But when you do not walk with the spirit, and this is the ministry of the fivefold, to bring us to a point where we create the roadmap. Listen, what we do is we plant and we water, but it's your dealings with God that brings increase in your life. Are you listening to me? Our job is to open up a portal and lead you and say go. And then you begin to experience certain dimensions of God. You have been reading every time. The Bible talks about tithing. And then you have been saying, wow. If they ask you in Sunday school, you answer. Discipleship, you answer. CRS, you answer and you do very well. And then one day God begins to tell you, all right, you've been reading this thing. When will you put it to work? experience knowledge translating into experience now you come out here and stand and you drop the tight and listen to me god will oftentimes cause the result to happen instantly so that you can see the